trending. Congratulations to Oregon's Sabrina Ionescu. She capped an emotional day by becoming the first Division College basketball player, men or, Division I college basketball player, men or woman, to collect 2,000 points, 1,000 rebounds, and 1,000 assists in a career. Ionescu, of course, began the day with an emotional speech at the Kobe and Gianna Bryant Celebration of Life at the Staples Center in Los Angeles, then traveled to Northern California for Oregon's 74-66 win over fourth-ranked Stanford, and the just incredible part of it, she accomplished the feat on 2 24 20 to Gianna's number, 24 Kobe's number, and 20 Sabrina's number. We continue. It's trending. Bradley Beal last night had 55, a career high, in the Wizards' loss in overtime, 137 134 to the Bucks. But he had 53 Sunday. Bradley Beal becomes the first player since Kobe Bryant. A score 50 on back-to-back nights. Bryant scored 60 against Memphis and 50 against New Orleans in back-to-back days in 2007. Additionally, Bradley Beal becomes the first player in NBA history to score 50 points in back-to-back games and lose each of those games. And we finish up what's trending with what should be a trend potentially all spring training and in the regular season as well. As Jose Altuve and most of the Astros were booed in their spring training opener. And then Altuve was unintentionally hit by a pitch. Altuve was the first well-known Astro to step into a batter's box since the sign-stealing scandal began and got a glimpse of the future. Now, to be fair, he was hit on the foot. It was unintentional. No one is trying to hit somebody when you throw at their feet. You're trying to throw a breaking ball and it goes away. Right. Trying to hit them. You don't want to hit them on what the smallest part of their body is, the foot. So understand that. An off-speed pitch got away from Tiger reliever Nick Ramirez. It hit Altuve in the lower leg. Still a hit by, pit, hit by pitch in Altuve's first game is going to draw a lot of attention from a lot of baseball fans. And it just goes back to that uh, that uh, sports book. Was it Westgate? Giving us the over-under on how yeah, many times. Yeah, 82 and a half, I think it was. Times. Or 83 and a half, something uh, like that. They, w- they will be hit. William Hill was William Hill. Thank you mm-hmm. on that. So... You know, you wonder how much that's going to be a part of the process going forward for them. And, you know, Dusty Baker, the new manager of the Houston Astros, feels so strongly about it that they've he's already basically been pleading to Major League Baseball, hey, protect my guys. Right, right. And as far as the booing, you know, the, the, the Astros had their starting infield out there and they all got booed. And after the game, Carlos Correa seems to be the one that's balking the most, speaking up the most, you know, what he said against Cody Bellinger, you know, know the facts before he, t- he seems to be the one, instead of probably doing more the right thing of just, listen, you guys got caught with your hand in the cookie jar and now you're right. starting to kind of, you know, squawk back a little bit. He was asked how, how the booing doesn't affect me. Don't hear yeah. it at all. You know, yeah. so he's, he's kind of playing that role this year. He's going to be that anti, you know, kind of, this doesn't bug us. We're still going to be who we are. And, Part of me understands that you got to play 162 sure. games. You got a long season to go, and you know you want you want to try and act like this isn't going to affect you in any way. You're right. There's the other part of this though, and and you know, Correa is one among many other a couple of other players, including uh, Josh Reddick, who talked about getting death threats and that's all this kind ridiculous. of ridiculous. Now just dial it back. People I mean, come on, that's idiots. that's that. There's no reason for any of no. that. There's no. They're going to have a very difficult season. And they it's are. because of something that they brought on themselves, and that's understandable. Right. But that part of it is that, insane. That's, that's n- it's almost not even worth the discussion to saying how ridiculous of a person you have to be Correct. to actually type that out and hit send on that or actually think that. Yeah. Uh, it, it blows my mind at the, the idiocy. Anything the Astros have done, that is a million times worse if you th- sit there and will threaten a person's life because of it. Yeah, it, it makes no sense whatsoever. So we'll see what happens <laughs> yep. They're going forward. And we're all looking for inspiration. Yes, right? we are. We are We are knowing that. We're all looking for inspiration here. And we got some from a 62-year-old Marine who, by the way, makes us all feel inadequate. This is ridiculous, isn't yeah. it? Yes. Um, His wait, name is George Hood. George Hood, 62. He set the Guinness record for the longest time holding a plank. Not a plank of wood. Your body, no. a plank. Anybody who's worked out knows what you get the, in there. What's the longest time you've ever planked? Me? I, I mean... I've done it in workouts. Right. I've never tried to do it. The longest I've ever had to do it in a workout is a minute. Yeah. And, I, and I'm able to do that. I, I did it to three minutes once, and it almost killed me. Well. It literally almost killed This me. would have killed you uh, <laughs> because he set the world record eight hours, 15 minutes, and 15 seconds. Say that again. 
eight hours, 15 minutes, 15 seconds. I mean, it's... That's 62. It's, it's ridiculous. That's 62. So, of course, we said, all right, we got we to gotta ask this question out on, uh, on uh, social media, at Golik and Wingo. We asked, what oddly specific Guinness World Record could you break? Because, listen, 99.999999% of us aren't planking for eight hours, right? So let's throw that record out. You're yes. not getting it. So we've asked you, what record could you break? Pete said, most days spent watching Knicks and Dolphins game without destroying property. That's a, uh, that's a really that, good That's one. a testament to your inner fortitude. I, yeah. I, I got to say that that's not planking strength. <laughs> But that's a different kind of strength if that you can is. go through all of that with those two teams. I would agree. Yeah. Sean, I like this one. Most peanut butter consumed in a 24-hour period. Could you live on peanut butter alone? Yes. I think I could, I too. said, you know, they always do that. You're on the desert island. What food could you – if butter. you had to have it every day, peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Absolutely. I could I could do it forever. One, one The problem is you need something. To, you know, the peanut butter, you got to drink something. Yes. Right? And salt water would be a problem. Probably not going to do that. That's probably not a bad combination. But, yes, I could do that. Mike, how about this? What's the record for wasting time at work asking for a friend? Well done, Mike. I respect it. Doug says, most times throwing a ball hoping my dog brings it back. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> JD, longest time spent in bed napping. That is JD code for someone in your family? No, but I tell you what, Sydney could give it a run. Yeah. Sydney could give it a run for most F-bombs in a podcast and longest time napping in bed. Yeah, so keep those coming. Yeah. We want to hear those uh, with you, Golik and Wingo. Eight, what Eight hour. Eight-hour plank. 62. 62. Yeah, really, really strong. Oh. Speaking of really, really strong, uh, not too long ago, a guest of ours was on the show and brought it really, really strong when it comes to what the NFL is facing. What is the r- likelihood of what he's saying could actually come to fruition? We'll get to that next. Golden Ringo, ESPN Radio, headed over to ESPN News on the television side.